Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Israel, written by Juno Diaz. Now, before I go into the summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, a subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, Israel by Juno Diaz is a very, uh, it's a short story, it's, it's interesting, um, it says a lot about Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, uh, and even touches upon its relationship with Haiti. Um, basically, what happens in this work, we meet this um, young kid by the name of, of Rafa, his little brother by the name of Junior, and um, they live in the Dominican Republic. At the beginning of the story, we learn that their father's in the United States working to get them to come and live with him. Their mother's working for like this chocolate factory in the capital of the Dominican Republic. Um, and these boys during the summertime, they pretty much stay uh, with other family members and the, the part of the Dominican Republic that they go into when they're on like, you know, summer break, uh, it's, there's no electricity, there's no TV, so they don't really have that much to do. Their mother can't really take care of them during the summertime when they don't have school. Um, so, you know, you get a, a picture painted for you on their lives that, you know, they're living in a country that's not a first world country. Um, right now, like in the 21st century, um, in 2021, Dominican Republic is still considered a, a developing country. Um, and pretty much mm, a, a good number of the, of the countries within the Caribbean, um, or even in fact around the world, are not first world countries. There's only about 31 first world countries in the world. Um, everything else is like developing, third world, um, rising up, or in poverty. So, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to live or to have been born in, th in those 31 first world countries, I know that, you know, first world, that first world label is not used that much anymore. It's not the proper way to, to mention developed countries. It's, it's just developed countries now. Uh, but, these individuals, they're living in a country that, you know, there's not that much um, fine, you know, you can't progress financially that much. Um, there are jobs, but it's not, it, you know, if you have a job, you're going to fight, you're going to fight to keep it. Uh, so basically, these boys are, it's the summertime, they're left alone, they're, they're with other family members, they're not with their mother, they're not with their father. And um, Rafa and 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 um, Junior, they're like, they're not. They don't work well together because Rafa, just by his name, he just sounds this this person that's rough, that's that's violent, and he pretty much comes off as a bully, as a person, you know. Uh, he he at a young age because Rafa's only twelve, but at a young age, um, we 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 were learning a lot of from him and how he's like. Um, having sex like at a young age and he's connecting with you know with girls and he has girlfriends and friends and he's he's like a playboy and the things that he he tells his little brother junior about all of his kind of like um sexual explorations but he's only 12 so there's only so much you can believe that a, that a 12 year old is doing I mean, it's not outright saying that he's lying about what he's doing with these girls, but he's 12 years old. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, there's nothing within the word that suggests that he's lying, but it just seems like it just seems like the, the acts that he's getting involved with are not what a 12 year old would get involved with. Um, Cause he's like going after girls. He's he's trying to sleep with them. He's telling his brother who's nine years old and he's 12. I mean, that's not really what you would picture a 12 year old getting into. But at the same time, I can't outright say it's not a it's not it's a lie because, I mean, it's well documented that, you know, around the world, you, you see 12 year olds and kids that are younger than 15. You know, they're involved in sexual acts at a young age. So it's not it's not it's not something that you can't believe. Um, so. Rafa is really old, like his actions are very adult uh, for a person that that is that is twelve. I mean, f like if I didn't see that he was twelve, I would have said that this is a, a person that has to be at least seventeen. Um, the way that you know he's described and his actions are described, it seems like he's supposed to be someone that's like seventeen or older, but he's not. He's a young kid. 
Um, so basically, that's Rafa's life. He's telling Junior about all of his exploits and all the things he does in his free time and his life. Um, and during the summertime when he's with family, um, he gets pretty bored. I mean, Junior's kind of content with, you know, staying at, you know, his family's house. Um, but Rafa is not. Um, and eventually what happens is they decide to go visit this kid by the name of Israel. And Israel is this kid that has, um, they say that a pig ate his face when he was young. Um, but it feels like that's a, that, that's a rumor. Um. But, you know, they go after Israel, they pretty much play hitchhike with these city buses or this public transportation, which is quite significant But it, because it doesn't seem... The, the, again, uh, the, the Dominican Republic is... Uh, this was written in, like, the, the, the 1970s, so back then the Dominican Republic was considered to be a third world country. Um, and now, today it's kind of like in between third world and developing. Uh, so... It's interesting that you see this public transit, this this public transportation system, um, and that they pretty much play hitchhike. They they go to find Israel, and pretty much it's off this rumor that a pig ate his face, and he's wearing a mask, um, and um, he's not letting people see his messed up face, and so. Pretty much, um, Rafa and, and Junior, they, they go find Israel, they find him flying a kite, they get, the, they get him to kind of like bring them to the supermarket or the grocery store to buy a drink, um, Rafa buys a drink for, for Junior, then they use this Coke bottle to, to, to pretty much knock out Israel, and then they take off the mask and look at his face that's, you know, badly wounded, um, you, um, Israel did tell him that he was going to get an operation to fix his face, but Rafa doesn't believe him. And I, I agree because, again, this is a country that, you know, finances are not easy. So getting an operation to fix your face when it's badly damaged, most people probably don't have the money to get that done. So the idea, unless like it's like some sort of, um, well, you know, Nonprofit that was present in DR, um, helping people that need surgeries. You know, it probably would be hard for um, a person that doesn't have that much money to fix their face if they're badly wounded. Um, so um, they take off the mask. Yuner uh, and Rafa they take off the mask. They see uh, Israel's face. I mean, they look at it. I mean, there's not much you can do after that. Then they just leave him alone, kind of beaten up, and um, they go back home and they hitchhike again. And you know they they try to cheat the the bus driver or or you know their fare. They don't pay their fare. They run. They they scheme their way, um, and then they go back home. And kind of like the last thing we're left with is kind of like Junior saying, you know, the kid's gonna be alright. He's gonna have the operation. They're gonna fix his face. And and Rafa's like. Uh, that's mm -mm, that's not gonna happen, and and, and again, it, it probably won't happen because you know money money is tough. Um, the other thing that, that's that's significant here is that um the way that Haiti is bringing into this because we know that you know that Dr and Haiti they share the same island, and this is I find this very interesting because both Haiti and Dr, uh, they are third world slash developing countries. I mean. DR has a much better economy. Um, financially speaking, it is a much better country than Haiti. But when you're looking at things from the outside, both countries are third world slash developing. And in both countries, there's, there's, there's a lot of poverty. So um, I guess it, it's kind of like you're not that rich, but you're kind of like looking down upon someone who's not that rich, but he's a little bit not less not that rich than you. So, I mean, because cause why I say that's because um, Rafa, uh, when he's like trying to bully Junior and, and taunt him, he, tell, he calls him a Haitian and, you know, he says that you have big lips like, you know, certain Haitians have and, and um, it's... I guess that's the way he taunts him and makes fun of him because, you know, apparently the 
the nation on the other side of the island, they, they look like you and that's an insult. But it's like, I mean, both countries are, are, are not first world countries. Both countries are trying to develop and there's poverty in both. So, I mean, I understand the comment. I understand that they're a little bit better off, but at the same time, it's like we're both we're both almost in the same place. So, I mean, if you're Dominican, if you're Haitian, you're, you're going to, um, you know, have different ideas about it. You're going to look at it differently. Um, but that was something that came up. Um, I just thought that would be interesting to mention. Um, so that's the short story. That's what happens within it. I mean, it's a great look at the, the life a person might lead in, in the, um, on Hispaniola and what goes on there. Um, and what these two kids were up to at a young age, I mean, nine and 12 years old, man, that's, that's a very early age, um, to get involved into the things that they're getting involved with. Cause they, they basically seek out to, to beat up an already d a disabled individual just because they wanted to see his disabled face. Um, I mean, it's a great piece of writing. I think it's, it's definitely interesting. Uh, and again, it makes you see. Uh, the lives of, of ordinary people in, in countries that are not that well off as others. Um, in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning, I think that Junior and, and Rafa, their relationship is very toxic. I think that, you know, Rafa is the type of, of brother that's going to taunt and bully Junior all of his life. I think that they, he definitely needs, needs some distance uh, between his brother and I'm getting the short story from the collection uh, the drown uh, Collection it's a, it's a book that has a bunch of short stories in it and I think later um, I haven't gotten to reading the, I haven't read the whole collection yet, but I, I'm pretty sure that Junior will get some separation from Rafa Because uh, Rafa seems to be a, a take the bulls with by the horns type of person uh, He sees the world as against him. You know, he knows that he's he's you know, he's not rich He knows that you know, he, he kind of, he, he sees reality at a young age because when he tells Junior that, you know, Israel is probably not going to get that operation and that's just, that's just, you know, nothing's going to happen to him. He, he's, he's a kid, but he's already recognized the world for what it is, is that, um, you know, things don't come that easily. And sometimes people promise things and they don't keep it. And is, this is especially true when you live in a country where there's widespread poverty and everybody's just trying to survive. So he's seen the world and he's, he seems like a guy that's going to do whatever it takes. Um, whatever it takes to be successful, um, like on his own way. Um, so he's he might be a dangerous individual, an individual that might take some actions that might hurt others that are near him. And, and Junior, Junior is definitely totally different from Rafa because he's more kind, uh, more gentle, and it seems like he's not as uh, blunt and, and abrasive as Rafa can be. I mean, just by their names alone. I mean, I know names can, can don't necessarily mean what a person is, but Rafa, just his name alone just sounds so rough and so ready, while Junior seems more welcoming and soft and, and gentle. Um, but that, that's pro that probably doesn't hold much water. It's just, I mean, sometimes just by a person's name, you, you, people usually make general assumptions about a person if, depending on how their name sounds, um, if your name sounds, um, you know, rough and, and sharp and edgy, I might, you know, see you as a more dangerous person. But if your name is kind of like more gentle and smooth, I might think that you're nicer. That pretty much... It doesn't hold any water because, you know, a name is just a name. It doesn't determine your actions. But um, I feel like in this short story, I feel like the, the the feeling of the name and the sounding of the name in of a way plays with their actions. Um, that's just my two cents. It, it, it probably doesn't hold that much water, but I, I thought that I would just suggest it. Um, that's, that's your general idea. Uh, of this work and this short story and this is the first story in the drown collection and what happens within it very fascinating gives you a good look on this island and what goes on within it um i think that <laughs> another thing i would say before i end this video is that um there is this one little excerpt where there's this girl that is probably not even 
15 and she's ha she's having sex and you know all these kids are like young and uh i guess they're exploring their bodies really early and this was messed up and, and funny at the same time but she thought that by drinking i think coca-cola uh that you know she won't get pregnant if she drinks coca-cola which is really sad and and i guess you could say funny because it shows you how um sex ed is not a priority in the community um well in i'm not saying the whole country but but in that person's life you know she didn't know you know that much about her body and, and reproduction and you know it probably leads to a lot of problems for people who have that that thought process um but it shows you what type of world they were living in uh because you know, even their their sexual education was, was really off because, you know, a lot of the girls that Rafa interacted with and his friends interacted with, a lot of them got pregnant extremely early. Um, so that is my summary and, and look and analysis on this short uh, work. Um, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video.